Welcome everyone to another session of Becoming. This is a series where we come together to talk about careers and learn about these careers in energy efficiency. We are very grateful for the two sponsors who make this series possible. So those two sponsors for us are Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. Both sponsors are key in growing the Canadian energy efficiency workforce, and we couldn't do this without them. The Becoming series is where we meet leaders in the sector and hear their story about how they got started, what skills are important for their role, and any advice they have for people looking to follow in their footsteps. So I want to start this with a land acknowledgement, as we typically do. I personally live and work in Calgary, Alberta, home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sutina, the Stony Nakoda Nations, Métis Nation Region 3, and all of the people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. So with that, uh, if you haven't heard about it, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the Discovery Hub. So the Discovery sessions that we have and the Becoming sessions all really lead to this Discovery Hub. So you can join us on that hub. It's an online platform. It's got courses, it's got events, it's got networking opportunities to make it easy to thrive in an energy efficiency career. So you can join a specific role to be part of that community if you're interested in that role, learning more about it. And then if you join that role, you actually find all these courses and hear from people who are already working in the role right as a part of that role. It's all connected. You can even jump into a virtual campfire and meet new people in the sector or meet people who are already working in the sector and ask questions. So it's really meant to connect you to people. We're also going to be launching a job board very, very soon, so make sure you check it out. And I will put the link to that in the chat. So one more quick mention, and then I will introduce our guest speaker today. So we are recording this event. You will be able to go back, review anything you miss, and you know, if you know anybody you'd like to send this to who might be interested, you're welcome to send it their way as well. So we will be ending at about 545 and the last half of the event is for Q&A. So right now we'll start with a bit of an interview style approach to get to know Chris a little bit. And then throughout the presentation or, you know, afterwards, you're welcome to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Or you can raise your hand during the Q&A section and I can unmute you to ask your question out loud. So let's get to our guest speaker today. This month's speaker is Christopher George. In 2005, Christopher George set out on a mission. He wanted to change the experience homeowners had when purchasing new windows and doors. Chris wanted to provide exceptional value and an enhanced customer experience, ensuring that his clients were properly educated on all of the options so that they could choose the most suitable windows and doors for their home and feel comfortable and confident in their decision. So Chris founded Douglas Windows and Door on this premise, experiencing experience the Douglas difference, which became more than just a tagline, but a way of life for his Douglas team. Now, over 15 years later, Douglas Window and Door is well known with an established and award-winning reputation for delivering excellence. At the core of this reputation lies a true dedication and focus on offering the very best products and professional service. So with Energy Star rated Windows and Door projects or products, Douglas helps homeowners heavily reduce their heating and cooling energy use all year round. So we're going to do this interview style. So let's get started with the questions. So are you ready, Chris? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Okay, so the first question should be pretty easy. We heard a little bit about it in your bio, but uh, tell us how you got started in your career. It was uh, kind of fell into it, if you will. Windows and doors isn't, isn't something that your high school gu guidance counselor really pushes you into. So it ended up being being a, almost a second career for me. I'm a, a tool and die maker by trade. And to be very frank with you, I found out I, I was terrible at it. It was, you know, you're doing, dealing with such tight tolerances within about one thousandth of an inch. And just my, my, my brain was always wandering. So I, I found that I, I, was, I was absolutely terrible at, at doing things like this. So I went into more of a construction where you're dealing with eighths of an inch and sixteenths of an inch, which is a lot easier for, for my, my brain to deal with. And I, I found that I was quite successful in it. You know, we, we went from building decks and fences to doing, you know, full renovations. 
And the, the, the thing that I, I fell in love with most was the, the windows and the doors. It was, you know, pulling up to a customer's home and uh, I was an, I'm an installer. First of all, I don't do a lot of installing anymore, but the pulling up to a customer's home and, and at the end of the day, after shaking their hand and getting a big smile, it was, it was always nice to, to, to be able to turn around and see the, the job that you did and the accomplishment that that was made for the day. So that's kind of, you know, the, the quick version of, of where I came from and, and what made me fall in love with windows and doors. And then as your career kind of, kind of unfolds, you, you really do fall into that, that niche. And, and what our niche was, uh, was putting the top quality, best, most energy efficient product in a customer's house. So even more than just the, the aesthetics and, and the look of the accomplishment of, of providing a wonderful service to a customer, you know, they, they got to feel the, the rewards of that, you know, three years to come because you knew that you did what was right by the customer and it, that mm -hmm. will save them some money on their, their heating bills and their cooling bills moving forward and into your years that are coming and kind of preparing them for, for what, what's coming next in the, you know, in the evolution of, of you know, our planet and what, what's mm -hmm. happening with global climate change. Awesome. So it sounds like it happened really naturally for you. It was kind of just one logical step after the other. It, it did. And, and again, because, because it's not, not a career that, that I ever even knew existed in, in, in high school, I, I find that, that my story is not uncommon. You, you don't, you don't grow up wanting to be a window and door installer or be in our industry. You, mm -hmm. you fall into it. And, and once you're into it, you'll, you'll find that most people are, are lifelong window and door people, whether it be on the sales side, on the installation side, or even on the administrative side, you'll, you'll find that there are, there, there are lifelong people in our industry and, and they, they won't leave because it's, it's a wonderful place to, uh, to grow in a, in a career. Okay. You're making me want to be part of this industry now. <laughs> yeah, you're hired. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about any sort of defining or aha moments you had that led you here. So if somebody was interested in this, what were the defining moments for you or any aha moments that led to your success? Um, you know, it's a, it's not, I get there is an aha moment, but it was, a, it was an interesting moment that, that kind of brought me to windows and doors specifically mm -hmm. and it was just that I was you know I was I was a site supervisor for a home builder so I was actually on a hot Friday afternoon backfilling a gravel basement of a home that was being built backfilling after the plumbers and sweating and I was dirty and I was up to my knees in mud and my, my best friend called me and, and he said Chris let's you know let's get together tonight and so I said, well, sure, but what are you doing right now? So I heard a whole bunch of laughing and, la and stuff in the background. He goes, oh, we just finished installing a house of windows and doors. We're swimming in the customer's pool and they're barbecuing for us. Oh my God. And it was, it was amazing. And I, I was like, well, how do I get that job? He goes, well, we're, we're hiring. So I went from, you know, building, building fences and decks and, you know, stairs to not really knowing windows and doors and, and all the intricacies that come along with it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so I, I went for an interview and got a job for, for the company. And, and so that's kind of how that was a bit of an aha moment was, was, was that as hard as I was working and it seemed to be work that wasn't as satisfying as, as what he was doing with the, the customer appreciation and the fun. So it was, and it, once I got into the installation end of it, it really was like that. You get those wonderful customers that are so appreciative of what you've done for them and and yeah, you get to do fun things like swim in their pool at the end of the job and really get to know the people and have fun with them. So that was a, a bit of an aha moment. But the, after that, as my career kind of, kind of turned to, to more of business ownership, I, I left the, the installation place I was at and went to another place that was not nearly as organized and was not nearly mm -hmm. as good. And I really felt like like the aha was I can do this better hmm. than, than what this is. So that's where the Douglas window and door came to fruition was just in the, the knowledge and in the confidence that, that what I had learned and, and how I'd been brought up in, in the industry for that, that amount of time, I knew I could do it better. I knew that I could do things differently. Well, subsequently we, we really have, and it's, it's been, been a wonderful 16 or 17 years. So those, those, those would be some of the aha moments. And anyone that, that, that is listening that 
that and says, oh, I don't really know anything about windows and doors. It's, it's a steep learning curve, but, but the, the industry is, is just, just waiting for, for new blood to, to come in to, to be trained. And as long as you're not afraid of a little hard work and dedication and you're, you're a loyal, loyal person, you, you can do big, big things in our industry. And it's, it's, it's an exciting time for industry because, you know, there, there is, there seems to be a bit of a turnover from the old guard to the, mm-hmm. to the young guys coming up. And I'm stuck somewhere in the middle there, which is a pretty, pretty good place because I can help train the, the new guys and, and help give the, the o- older, older guys a, uh, you know, a, a place to come for, for a less intensive job from installing, mm-hmm. maybe doing final measure work or mm-hmm. doing install or not installation, but service work. So there's, there's lots of avenues to, to grow from in our industry. And it's, uh, yeah, I love it. I'll, I'll Amazing. never leave, I'll never leave it. It sounds like the culture is such a huge driver. Yep. No, for sure. There's That's um, incredible. You know, it varies from, from company to company, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, o- overall we all get along and there's lots of business out there for everyone. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I can't say enough good things. Amazing. <laughs> I feel like I picked the wrong profession. So uh, talk a little bit about the demand right now. So, you know, I think people are hearing that we're short tradespeople. What does it look like right now in windows and doors? I know you can probably only speak to sort of like your area, but I think there's lots of jobs available right now. So talk a little bit about that and then what it sort of takes to get into windows and doors. Like where would be an obvious starting point? Well, again, only speaking from from my my personal experience, installation is by far the, the best place to start. And it's where it's most needed right now, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people coming up in, in what I'd call like the YouTube generation where, where they want to, you know, be a YouTuber and they, they want to do lots of things with computers, which is, mm-hmm. it's, it's needed. So the, a lot of the, the younger generation that I'm, you know, that, that I'm, I'm seeing right now don't have the, the interest in, in the, in the trades the way, the way they, they really should, because the, mm-hmm. The amount of remuneration from, you know, it can be monetary, it can be from job satisfaction, it can be from, you know, perks and benefits. Mm-hmm. It's, it's amazing how, how well remunerated people are in our industry now. The other interesting thing is, is that windows and doors is not a red sealed trade. So mm-hmm. we're not, we're not a plumber, we're not an electrician, we're not a, a carpenter, but we touch more plumbing than we'd probably like to admit we do. The same with (laughs) electricity and the same with all the framing and the finishing carpentry. We're we're very much a a trade that that encompasses a lot of different red seal trades. Mm -hmm. Uh, So again, that's where where even less emphasis is put on windows and doors as opposed to some of the other trades who are also looking for people. Um, But yeah, uh, to get into windows and doors, male female doesn't doesn't matter what you know race religion creed whatever whatever you are it's a very welcoming uh, trade as well mm-hmm. uh, and definitely jump into the installation side become an installation helper or an installation assistant learn what it is to to be in in windows and doors and as long as you've got a, a good lead hand who's going to you know take the time to to show you how how to, how to do things right you can move up quite quickly within the first, you know, three to four years, you could start doing some of the smaller jobs on your own. And then, you know, seven, eight years from, from then you could be running huge, huge jobs, you know, worth, worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and, you know, commanding the respect of all your peers and, you know, the people you're working for and the people you're working, uh, when I say working for, I meant like, you, you know, your, your bosses as well mm-hmm. as the, the customer. So the, that's where you really want to get into is the installation standpoint. From there, you can, you can, because you're going to gain the knowledge of the inner workings of the home and mm-hmm. how you're going to do, you know, install the product. And so you can transfer those skills into a sales role or into an administrative role. When mm-hmm. people are calling and asking questions, you'll speak so eloquently and knowledgeable mm-hmm. uh, about, about the products and about the, the way things are done that people will be drawn to you and you'll be such a great source of information for, for every, every layman, if you will, that, that doesn't really understand the construction industry. Uh, so yeah, that's my, that's my long winded way of saying get into installation, 
And, and if I can just, just kind of add to that, when it, when it comes to, to females, there's not enough in our, in our industry. I know of, I know of well, we, we've got a couple of them and they're notable. Like when you, when you speak to a, a, a female on the phone that, that just knocks your socks off with their, their knowledge and, and it, it's because it's not, it's not commonplace right now, which I, I wish it was, but if, because it's not commonplace that you're, you're, you're so notable and so memorable that, mm -hmm. that people continually ask for you. And it's, it's an amazing opportunity. Excellent. So I think that's a really good segue into skills. So not everybody maybe grows up in the construction industry. And, you know, I think we've heard a lot of people are transitioning to different roles. So if they don't necessarily have the background, what kind of skills would you be looking for in people that are, you know, if they're going to sort of enter into that installation opportunity, sort of aside from background, like what skills would you be looking for? Or what skills would really benefit people to work in this, this industry? It's, it's the soft skills that, that, are, that mm. are most important. It's the, it's the, the yearning for knowledge and, and to, to want to pay attention and to learn. Um, you know, there, we, we've had a number of, of people through, through over the years that, you know, they're more, more interested in text messaging their friends on their telephone while they're on a job site than the way they should right. be. So, so the soft skills are what I'll say number is number one, which mm -hmm. is, I, that's changed substantially over the last 10, 10 years. If you asked me that question a decade mm -hmm. ago, I wouldn't have answered it like that. So if you, if you've got the willingness to learn and if you've got, you know, a, a, any level of aptitude that, that has the ability to, to pick up new skills, the, those, those soft skills are what's more, most important. When it gets more to the practical aspect, I, I would love to see someone bring themselves up to speed in terms of knowing how to read a measuring tape. Mm. In Canada, we're a metric system, but in windows and doors, we're in the imperial. So we do, uh -huh. we do inches and feet. So, you know, if you do want to do any, any learning on your own to, to bring yourself up to speed, learn how to use a measuring tape and, and understand that the difference between, you know, your, your feet and inches and then your, your meters and your centimeters. It's, it's, that, I guess that's maybe another barrier to entry for Canadians and probably Europeans is, is that we're feet and inches instead of metric. Mm -hmm. But those, those, again, the soft skills and then learn how to use a measuring tape and you know what, if you, if you've got a, a gym membership and, you know, you want to, you know, lift some weights and, and get a little bit more flexible just to keep your, you know, keep your body healthy, that's, that's always good because it is a physically de demanding uh, job when you're on, on the tools. Um, yeah. But it, it's not, it's not like a lot of other trades. It's, hmm. it, it is a lot, a lot, a lot easier than for, on the body anyways, than a lot of hmm. other trades. So th those would be the things that, that you'd want to pay attention to most in order to get into the installation side of the business. Okay, fantastic. That's really helpful to know. And then this is more or less our last question, sort of in the formal part of this interview process. So when you were an installer, I mean, you can certainly take us through what, what it is like for you today as a business owner. I think there's value with that too. But just sort of like from the context of a window installer, take us through what a day would look like for you. What's the regular day in a window installer's life? Uh, waking up fairly early, you know, you, you're not, not, not too bad because you're going to a customer's home. So, you know, if you wake up early and, and start the day, uh, you know, with a clear head, that that's always most important. And then getting to the meeting point. So for, for all of my crews, we, we meet at our, our warehouse and, you know, I think we meet somewhere between 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And then everyone, you know, has their coffee and, and laughs and has a good time. We all load trailers together. So, you know, four to five crews are, are all backed up with their trucks and trailers loading up the, the day's project product. Uh, and again, it's very, there's a lot of camaraderie in the, in the mornings, which, mm. which is, which is something that, that I miss that I, I don't get to do as often as, as I always used to. So, you know, the la laughing with the, the teams and, and, you know, some good ribbing and whatnot. So it's, there's a lot of fun in the mornings. And then you basically just jump in one of your, whatever your truck and trailer is and, and get to the job site and you unload. And the first thing you do is you, the, the junior will start to set up all of the, your saws, your drop sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just make sure everything is ready to go for the lead installer. And then 
you start to you measure your windows in the openings before you ever start to rip out a window. There's there's always mistakes that happen. So you got to measure all your windows that are in the house, make sure that everything will fit, and you just you start to go. So that's it's that's that's your general morning. There's not there's n nothing that is, that would be out of the ordinary from that, other than what people might not know is is how much fun the mornings are, other than having to, to wake up, you know, fairly fairly early. That's the yeah. only. That's the only thing. As long as you're at a job site, you know, between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., people mm. usually, usually, usually appreciate the early start. So. Yeah. Well, it's not like, you know, I have heard some trades, they start at like five or six in the morning. So it's not, yes. that's no. pretty good. Yeah. You're, yeah. We, we, I, I think I was always up somewhere around six or 6 30 in the morning. So, yeah. you know, as long as you go to bed by, before the late night shows come on, you're, you're fine. Well, depending on, on, on what side of the, 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 uh, the country you're on anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, that ends the formal interview part of this. So I'll just invite our attendees to put any questions you have in the, the question and answer box for Chris. I really, I, I just appreciate your your perspectives on this so much. I knew nothing about this before. Definitely don't come from a construction background aside from like YouTube projects, like you said, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that qualifies me or not. So, yeah. so <laughs> some, of the, some of the things that they, where the industry is really going right now is there, there's a couple of associations and governing bodies. So for, for companies like mine, you've got the Siding and Window Dealers Association of Canada, mm -hmm. which, which I, I really think that, that, you know, every window and door dealer across the country should, should at least investigate to see if it's, if it's something that, that they're interested in, in joining. There's a lot of benefits, including, you know, extra warranties and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it gives you a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of advantages when it comes to notoriety. And then you've got Fenstration Canada as well, and that's more for the manufacturers. Right. But there are a couple of great, great organizations that are kind of governing bodies for our industry. Mm. And, you know, the, the, the industry is missing a little bit of regulation, but those two governing bodies are doing a pretty good job right now. Okay, that sounds great. I actually had a chat with Fenstration Canada this morning. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so not a ton of questions jumping out here, but maybe you could just talk a little bit about what some of the challenges are right now in the in the the window and door industry. I know just from my conversation this morning, they were talking about supply and demand. I think that's affecting everyone right now. So what are some of the challenges that you're running into, the industry's running into? Yeah, well, right now the consumer appetite for our products is is at an all time high, and then the supply chain issues are definitely making things a little bit more difficult in terms of timelines. So, you know, a, a window and door that I used to be able to get in you know three to four weeks is now taking you know twelve to sixteen weeks. So it is it is a lot, but the slowdown has come gradually, uh, and as right, long as you you. You know, you're up front, you update customers regularly. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been really understanding. It's, it's no different than, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find a hot tub or trying to, you know, to do, do any type of renovation right now. Everything's taking long, but I do feel like it, mm -hmm. it is, it's loosening up a little bit. Things are starting to, to get back to normal a little bit. So definitely the timelines would be a bit of a struggle. The labor pool right now is, is quite shallow. Uh, there's a little bit of what I'd call hyperinflation happening where, you know, if, if I want an installer that's gainfully employed and I entice him with more money, well, the person who I'm bringing away from will say, oh, well, he gave you that, I'll give you this. And so it starts to, to really creep up in terms of wage. So it's great for the people joining the, the industry, but for the consumer, everything is getting more and more expensive. So if there's consumers out there listening that, that think that they're going to hold off till things cool it down, it's probably not going to cool down. It probably will continue to get more and more expensive. So that's definitely a, a little inside tip probably is against most people's train of thought. So there, yeah, between the labor pool, the timelines, I think the manufacturers are having difficulty finding the, you know, even the not so skilled labor positions. Just, mm -hmm. just getting some, some warm bodies that are willing to show up every day. That's 
that's e even difficult only because some of the entry level positions mm -hmm. i think on the manufacturing floor the remuneration isn't quite what what, what it could be so with mm -hmm. the government grants and whatnot and everything that that's come through it's made it a little bit difficult for the the manufacturers as well and yeah I don't, it's it's a little difficult for everyone mm -hmm. and so the you know, including including the consumers and the homeowners. It's I I really I really feel like over the next six, eight, ten months, it, it should go back to normal. I don't see the prices ever going down, but I, I definitely see the the labor pool, you know, strengthening as consumer demand goes down slightly, and uh, everything should be fine in another six eight months. I hope. Interesting. Yeah, and I, this is actually a really good follow up question we just got. So Terry was wondering what the impact of the Greener Homes program has been. Have you seen a lot of impact from that? Oh, I'll, I'll be I'll be politically correct. Um, <laughs> I I personally wish that the government would would not get involved in our industry. What what it does is that it, it really creates peaks and valleys. It creates almost a, a, a false market that when, you know, there was a program in Ontario called the Green Ontario program where they offered substantial grants for, for windows and doors. And then, you know, the government's changed and they scrapped the program. Well, we went from a very high, high demand to a very low demand. And then the, now the greener homes has, has come in and it's again, stirred up demand for how long I, I assume they're going to keep this program going for quite some time, but again, it creates peaks of demand. And then if they, the government does scrap the program, it'll then create another valley. And yeah. so that's very difficult from, you know, a labor standpoint to, to facilitate those high peaks and staff up and then have to lay off or, or whatever you have to do to, to stay in business during, during those, those low times. But they, they've got their heart in the right place. They, they want their, the Canadian homes to be more energy efficient mm -hmm. and, and the energy bills are not going to go down. And the only way to, that we can really fight the, the climate change and the only way that we can, we can help customers be prepared for, for what's coming with, with energy bills and, and the energy consumption is by putting more energy efficient windows and doors and, and more energy efficient products in our house. Mm -hmm. So it, that, that's my best answer to that it's been hmm. it's been difficult with, with government intervention I, I i'll say it again i wish that they wouldn't but since they do we do our best and i i do understand that their their heart's in the right place and we, we just have to kind of you know play the hand we're dealt yeah i know it's challenging it's interesting when when the government puts these consumer programs in place it just it creates really strange dynamics in the market yeah. Yeah. So I, I hope that's not the case with this one. Yeah. Um, I, I just to, to expound on it a little bit more, just for one more point, because I it just I just ran into it with a, a customer. Mm -hmm. The the it seems as though the greener homes grant really caters to more of a a window. We'll speak windows specifically that allow solar gains to come into the home to help mm -hmm. the home deal with their 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 heating bills in the cooler months and it it really doesn't take into account the 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 opposite of that in the summer where you know you you almost want to keep the heat out to keep your energy uh, your air conditioning a little bit low so interesting so i i would i would still i i, I wish that there was so, some way to, to do a, a bit of a happy medium and uh, yeah so that I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll leave it at that but there's mm -hmm. there's a few there's a few issues with 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 in my opinion anyways with, with the program as it is right so yeah I'm sure it's interesting to hear that perspective for everybody on the line yes okay so we have a question from Maurice and the question is are there any best practices for installation that we should specify when considering a supplier or installer on a renovation there, there's so many there are there's so many that it's so difficult just to, to point out one the the best thing to do is to really go with with your gut get multiple quotes like mm -hmm. everyone gets three i don't have a problem if a customer gets four if a customer wants to have that many people in their home to get five but windows and doors is not rocket science you, you really need to go with your gut and, and when you know if you're if you're a fairly smart person that has you know their wits about them the the person that that says things to you that make you scratch your head 
that's that's not the company to go with. And the, the, the company that you want to go with that are going to have all those best practices are the ones that in your, your gut and the pit of your stomach, it makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. So the best advice that I have, and, and I guess I'm, I'm biased because I'm, I'm part of the program, but it's called Window Wise. And again, it's, mm-hmm. it's put on by the Siding and Window Dealers Association of Canada. And what it is, is it's, it's a training set that the installers of the, of the, the window company you're dealing with, dealing with have to be trained and certified through this window wise program that includes many of these best practices that, that, that we could name off. Not only do they get trained and you get a higher level of installation because of this training, or I shouldn't say you get a higher level because there are people that aren't trained that do wonderful work, but you can have the assurity that you will get better than, than what you would get without it from the average installer. It, you also get a five-year warranty and that warranty covers your windows. If the window manufacturer goes, goes out of business, SODAC and WindowWise will replace your windows. That, that also includes the installation. If the installation company is a fly-by-night installation company, well, then SODAC and WindowWise will actually pay another company to reinstall mm-hmm. your windows. Wow. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the the, the best way to, to skirt around such a long-winded answer of, of best practices because there's there's so many. I in, in my 20, 25 years of business, I've I, I've seen a, a lot of things that just shouldn't be. Hmm. And you know, I think maybe there's a good follow-up question here. So for people that are actually looking to get into the industry, what should they look for in a company? Oh well. I think, I think a company that, that's excited to have them because when, when you, when you walk in and it's a welcoming environment, you know, a, a happy employee or a happy person is going to always do his best work. So th- that's first and foremost, make sure you, you put your best foot forward. And, and then again, it's, it's, it's just all in, in that gut feeling. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not about their, their accolades and, and you know, what, what awards they they've won and 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 all it's not about that it's it's about you know you you only have so many trips around the sun and in, mm. in, in your work life make sure you're in a place that that appreciates you and mm. and as long as you're doing your your best work I, yeah if you're doing your best work and, and you're not appreciated there's there's other there's other many other companies out there that, that would appreciate you so yeah. that's to me that that's what it is it's all on a the soft skills it's on a personal level you know, make, make people happy, whether you're the installer, whether you're the, you know, the business owner, whether you're, Mm -hmm. you know, the supervisor, you you really want people to be happy and you want people doing their best work. And that's, that's what we, we strive to do within my organizations. Awesome. That's really, that's helpful advice. I think it's hard. You have to pick the company as much as they have to pick you. So for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go with the, don't go into the interview saying that, but but yeah, (laughs) they, yeah, definitely you're, you're right. They do. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we do have a couple questions about like actual installation advice, but because this is more of a careers focused webinar, maybe I'll just ask those individuals who are asking those questions to contact Chris. I'm sure he would be more than happy to answer those questions for you. I see Um, one. I can answer real fast. Oh, sure. Okay. Go for it. So how do you handle the issue of blinds and shutters? that are in front of the windows there's two ways of doing it one is you know you have the customer remove them and then when when you install your windows you ensure that you do a custom jam extension during the installation to to do make it the exact same size as the last one and then the customer either installs them back themselves or the you know they, they can pay a, whoever initially installed those blinds or shutters to, to reinstall them. As a company, myself, and in, in most of the industry as a whole, from what I've ever seen, is that we don't touch blinds and shutters only because the more handling that goes in, the more chance for damage, and you know who's pointing the finger at who to who mm-hmm. damaged what. And so that that's just our company policy and most that I've seen. But handling blinds and shutters from a new installation uh, standpoint, there should not be too many situations where you can't reinstall reinstall or reuse those blinds and shutters as much as I I wish that we didn't have to worry about it. We do. Mm. Yeah, that sounds totally reasonable. So, okay. So I have one last question. I'm just going to maybe put the call out. If you've got 
one more question that you want to get on the block that's I would just encourage it to be a little bit more career related but please you know if you've got one more question throw it in there otherwise you might get away a little bit early everybody can go go to happy hour a bit early today so my last question is what has been a standout day for you um, did you ever get your day in the sun where you got to have a pool and a barbecue <laughs> is there a day that really stands out in your mind Oh, yeah, you've put me on the spot with that one. <laughs> There's, uh, yes, yes, there, there, there was, it, it was, uh, it's always the most difficult customers that give you the hardest time and are so difficult to please. And there, there was one, there was one customer, that, you know, it's, it's just a, a regular install, but the, the, the capping had to be absolutely perfect mm -hmm. and the caulking couldn't have you know, couldn't have any, any bumps in it. And, you know, the, the installation had to be perfect and the windows had to be clean, just amazing. And, you know, your drop sheets had to be brand new drop sheets, didn't want any old drop sheets. And, and, you know, it was, it was such a nervous, hard installation and we had our best team on it. And I, I was there on site and just the, just, just the smile and the, the elation and the, the turn of, of coming from a confrontational argumentative very difficult person to mm. when the job was finished it was it was a, like such a sweet couple like so appreciative and so elated for for the job we'd done and so happy that that they'd chosen us to do it and then the, re the reviews that they, they gave us online and and you know the the gifts it was yeah yeah that's amazing yeah, yeah that that, that, that would be, that would be the, the one, the one for, you know, from an installation standpoint, for sure. And from yeah. a company standpoint, there, there's been a, a couple of awards and there's been, you know, some, some proud moments with them, um, be, you know, being with my, my father, my, my company, I named my company after my father. Oh, okay. Uh, he, he now works with us. So uh, yeah, he, he, he helps it, helps it in the warehouse. So it's, uh, there, there's been a, been a few proud moments with, with my, my father as well. Just, you know, you know, coming of age type story stuff. Awesome. That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so with that, we have come to a close. We don't have any more questions, and this has just been wonderful. I really appreciate your perspectives. I'm sure everyone on the call does. I had no idea that the the window industry was so welcoming and inclusive. It just sounds it sounds awesome. It sounds like a great culture. So, thank you for sharing all your expertise, all of your tips. And for anyone who joined us today, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time and your attention. And if you do have any questions, feel free to email us at the info at. I can certainly connect you with Chris as long as Chris is okay with that. Yep, no and thank you to our sponsors, Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. And hopefully we will see you at a becoming event again, everyone. Take care and have a good night. Thanks, Chris. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.